Thank you for joining us tonight. It is live, it is The Late Show, and uh, it is Thursday the 10th of January, just to let you know. You know, as I watched that intro, everything was whizzing past quite fast, and you know, things today are so much faster than they used to be, say, 50 years ago. Those of you who are my age and even older, 66, 67, whatever. But life is moving so fast, and reminds me of a scripture. But I'll get into that in a minute. I want to introduce uh, my guest, my lovely friend, Dr. Hugh Jackman. Oh, bless you, Howard. Yeah. It's good to be here. Yeah. Um, well, you've been, you've been with us so long. I mean, it sounds like, you know, we're old, old, old friends, and we are, and you've gone grey since I saw you last. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been going grey for a long time, actually. <laughs> yeah, ever since you met me. Yes. <laughs> I would say you would have had something to do with that. Yeah, going back yeah. to the, mm. I would say around about 95, 96, 1995, 96, by the way, just put that on the record. Yeah, maybe a little bit before that, mm. um, 94, Late 94, yeah, 94, yeah, yeah when, the, um, when Christian television wasn't, wasn't around. Yeah, that is what is so amazing mm. about prophecy. Yeah. You know, two men in particular, Jonathan David and Dr. Mm. Noel Woodruff, spoke Mm. Uh, prophetically at that time that there were going to be Christian mm. uh, television networks, plural. Yes. Mm. And he said it was going to change the psyche of the people yeah. and what the way in which religious people had spoken in the media before, and these are the words, I know them yes. off by heart, yes. uh, was going to be broken. And people's perception of what uh, Christian or the church is going to be changed. And it was going to come and start in the United Kingdom. Isn't it amazing? And that man, or oh, those men, Jonathan David and Noel Woodruff, were spot on. Too, too, too accurate to put into words, really. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they got it right. They heard from God. They declared it. And, you know, the, the scripture that comes to mind for me is the, um, now, I wish I'd have done it, looked it up before. I think it's in 1 Samuel, possibly 9. And it says, um, you know, that, uh, that when Samuel, the prophet, spoke, that the Lord didn't allow one, one word of, that he spoke to fall to the ground. Uh, you know that scripture, you know, and when he prophesied, he became another man, you know. Oh, I and had so, it there and it dropped, dropped out. Yeah, but yeah. also that's reiterated in another scripture, I think it's in Isaiah, that, yeah. you know, whatever the Lord wills is actually going to come yes. to fulfillment. Yes. Every single word. And now, the, the interesting thing, I know there'll be people out there, and let me just say that you can take part in this live at revelationtv.com and also the uh, text number that's on your screen. Eventually, we'll have all the rest of them, the Twitters and the Googles and the, all, all the other things, the Facebooks. We can't c contend with everything at the moment. Yes. But what was said by the prophets of old mm. came to fulfill, be fulfilled. Yeah. You can see that in Scripture. But... You know, when it comes to modern day prophets, you've got to, there's a little bit more wariness or, or, or you know, s suspicious, um, suspicion, I should say, mm. by uh, people, even within the church, because mm. they look and think, well, is this man really, or is this woman really a prophet? And how can you tell? Well, the word of God gives us an, a, 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 an answer to that. It says, mm. if it becomes a reality, mm. if what a man or a woman, a prophet speaks, is comes to fruition then they are truly a prophet yes. so like you take Noel Woodruff and, um, and Jonathan David what they spoke at that time and we weren't just talking about uh, myself or there, were, there was Rory and Wendy yes. or, or with the which now you know as God TV mm. and so whether you like us or you hate us it was something that was initiated by God oh, yes. that spoke through a man or men mm into existence mm. and we're going to be talking tonight about a prophecy that was sent to us just a few days ago concerning um well let me just say it's concerning the church at large but particularly for europe particularly for the united kingdom and we're going to be looking at that uh, and going through it uh, by dr sharon stone sharon stone is a lady that uh, actually prophesied once into my life and just to set the stage a little bit for you Sharon Stone, uh, I was introduced to her in 1999. She'd come into a building where uh, um, and someone who wasn't a Christian built a studio for me. You remember at, uh, yes. at a company. I, don't, I, I want them to remain anonymous because they're not, they're not Christian, so I don't want to embarrass them. Mm. But uh, the man who actually uh, owned that company has uh, been elevated by, I believe, by God to be the most, one of the most successful businessmen in the whole of <coughs> Europe. 
It's interesting, isn't it? God blesses those Cyruses out there. Yeah. And uh, whilst I was in that building, um, Richard Fleming, who actually is the <coughs> European <coughs> director, it's all right, cough again. Uh, Richard Fleming, who's the European director of TBN, um, an Englishman as well, may I say, uh, actually brought Sharon Stone into this particular premises mm. in Teddington, uh, where the studio was, and um, s introduced me to Sharon Stone, but I was so busy, as usual, I was running in different directions all at one time. Right. And I said, hi, 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 hi. Uh, Richard Fleming took her back to his car and was driving her somewhere. And uh, Richard said to her, by the way, let me tell you a little bit about Howard. And she said, no, stop the car. God's telling me about this man. Yeah. Press that record button on that tape recorder and it's about 13, 14 minutes long. I actually found the tape for you cynics out there. And uh, if you want a copy of it, I'll gladly give it to you. Um, but I made a transcript of it as well, mm. so it's easier to read. She spoke, she said, God's telling me about this man and the things that she said, and some of them, not always, if you like, complimentary in there, as the Word of God, the Bible, that's what I like about the Bible, yeah. actually uh, talks about the people that God uses and, so, and, and exposes their weaknesses, if you like, mm. very open and frank. And uh, Sharon Stone said some things which have, they've all come true. Mm. <laughs> so I'm saying this to, as a forerunner for what we're going to be discussing tonight, because this prophecy which concerns really you and I, people within the Europe uh, zone, um, need to take note. Some of it's very encouraging, mm for us as Christians, you and I were reading it just about an yeah. hour ago when we thought we were alive there. Yes. We prematurely went uh, in an hour early, but we, it didn't have any impact because we weren't on the screens. But here we are an hour later with you, live at revelationtv.com and the information's on your screen for your SMSs. If you'd start off talking about this particular prophecy from uh, Sharon Stone, of, which was sent just a couple of days ago, it's. It says UK Prophetic Council Word for 2013 uh, and Dr. Sharon Stone, January the 7th, 2013, this was sent a couple of days ago. Yeah, it, um, as, as I open it up, it, um, it had shut there for a second, so I'm just reopening it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's some things that really sort of jump out for me uh, from this prophecy. Do Should, we go read from the beginning? Should we yeah, read I, it? Yeah. I think it's, yeah. it, um, both of us read it mm. in its entirety Bear with us, because I mm. really think this is spot on. Mm. It, it, both you and I came mm. to the same conclusion that it bears witness with mm. our spirit mm. that there is truth in this. Mm. And so, and because, because of that, we're going to dare to repeat it. Mm. And you know, Howard, before we just read that, I just wanted to say that with those prophecies, um, Noel Woodruff and the other chap, his name Jonathan is David. Jonathan David. Uh, one of the things that happened was when those words went out is that almost immediately there was a sweeping in. Uh, so the words were going out, and as the word goes out, then people were being sweet, people like me were swept into the flow of that word, as it were. So it's interesting that when you hear a prophetic word and it goes, it doesn't go by you, it, it, you kind of get swept into it and you think, this applies to me, and, and somehow you, that's another thing that just really. Um, lets us know that the word is true because you're swept into it, you're a part of it. And uh, if, especially when it's a word like that, as huge as it was, um, it's going to carry people off in the wave of it. So we pray that some of these things will actually carry people into the wave of it. Yeah. Mm. Um, shall I start? Do you want to start reading a bit? Or? Uh, yeah, please do. Yeah. Uh, we might reflect uh, on what was said uh, mm. by some of these prophets l l later on, but yeah. you know. But let's let's yeah. start with what is uh, really concerning the the now. Okay. 2013. Okay. This is a season, you know, a season of distinct contradictions. Yeah. Let's start there. Let's not miss anything because this yeah. is so important. Yeah. Well. Sharon has received the word obviously from the Lord. It says this will be a season when, when uh, we are drawn uh, to a new glory of the kingdom of God. Now that excites me. More glory that w than we have ever seen in 2013. She's saying there will be more glory in 2013. But then she goes on to say it, it's going to be a glorious year for the true church. And I agree with that statement. It will also be a gloomy year for the world. 
It's going to be a year of contrast between children of light and children of darkness. The next season of the world will be marked by crisis and solutions. So let us rise and shine in his glory. Can we just stop there for yeah. a minute? Yeah. Let's, mm. let's dissect mm. some of the things that have been said mm. here. This is a great opportunity for those in faith in Jesus Christ. I agree. Okay? Mm. The church of Christ are going to actually start to see, um, if you like, their light will shine. All the works that Christians do, whether they be dark or whether they be light, are going to be exposed and when they're going to come up. And it reminds me of what Daniel says uh, or records when the Lord said to him in mm. chapter 12 about how in the last days the righteous will become more obvious, if you like, yes. and the, those that will are wicked will act more wickedly. So it's, it's, it's almost like there's a, a meeting of the righteous against the wicked. Yeah. And we see that, actually, I see that being played out today. There is more a rise in the world of the antichrist spirit, mm -hmm. okay, mm. than, the, than ever before I've experienced in my 65 years. And I've been a, b a believer, I've been following the Bible since I was 21. Mm. I see more of a contention for, if you like, for domination. Not that Christians are trying to dominate the world. I mean, we're quite passive, really, as, as, a, as a faith group. Unlike, say, take the Muslim yeah. faith group, yeah. who are very ag aggressive and mm. will want world domination even with the sword. Mm. But Christians are not. So here, Christians use a different type of warfare. Mm. It's a spiritual warfare, uh, whereas other faiths might use uh, literally... Uh, weaponry uh, that is carnal. But here we are using spiritual warfare and we're starting to see, and this is what I hope by tonight's understanding of this prophetic word, mm. you will see and be emboldened to action because God is going to be with us to such a degree that you're going to see miracles happen. You're going to see the movement of uh, the Spirit of God that will enact itself and in and through powerful people in the media. You will come to that later. But yeah. it's so exciting. I'm, I mean, I'm honestly, I can hardly contain myself. Oh, I can see that. It's wonderful. You know? I'm just sitting here soaking it up. It's great to see it. But I agree with you that there is this sense of um, that we've moved into a phase of division between darkness and light in the world. And it's like... It's so obvious, okay, it's getting so obvious, so clearly obvious, that you would think that people would be able to see the distinction very clearly. Well, read the next yeah. bit of the prophecy. It's a quote from Isaiah. Oh, it, it is, that's right. Isaiah 60, verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. That's <laughs> well, there you go. We're, we're speaking yeah. literally by, by, by utterance. Uh, but this is what I've noticed in the last, towards the end of the last year. There, it's this great distinction and we're beginning to, our jaws are dropping and saying, oh, what is going on? Why can't yeah. we see? Well, but, yeah. it, whether it's through uh, the financial uh, problems in the world, whether mm. it's through uh, natural, as they would call, disasters, mm. uh, whether it's the fires in yes. uh, Brisbane or wherever it is in uh, Tasmania or whatever, uh, to the extreme cold and blizzards in uh, Iowa, or to the, the flooding and the rain downfall in the United Kingdom, yes. or whether it's to the drought in Middle Africa or wherever it is. Do you see, these things are not there by accident. It's not coincidence. No. Uh, is part of the problem that the, A, the world is actually is reaping what it's sown, mm. but also God is involved here, yeah. and it's biblical. Okay, this, uh, if you look at the Romans, let's have a look at, let's go through every word yeah. of this. It's so powerful. Yes, indeed. Well, then I'll read then. Romans 5.20, it says, where sin abounded, grace abounded so much more. Um, it says, you are not called to deny the darkness, but the glory and the abounding grace of the Lord on you will be a solution and a remedy in unprecedented ways. This is a word to the church, it sounds like. Yep. Uh, we must... Uh, let me just yeah. say that. Mm. People can become very discouraged because of our innate um, sinfulness. Mm. You know, there are times when we... Uh, when we become so discouraged because we fall into sin or we don't do the things that perhaps the Bible uh, encourages us to do. But it's not because we are always doing it deliberately. Mm -hmm. It's because of our innate 
inadequacies, our inherited sin from Adam all the way through, mm. as, as is mentioned in Romans 5. Mm. But what here God is saying is where sin abounds, grace abounds more. Mm. So God is saying, okay, I know you're a sinner. I'm using you as a sinner. But my grace is going to be sufficient for you to carry on being a witness to the world which is um, absolutely soaked in sin, mm. if you like, and, and yeah. trying to enjoy sin. Whereas a, a, I believe that when a Christian sins, he or she is regretting that. Yeah. You know, there's a difference there. Okay. Yeah. So God says, I know my thoughts in these days of uncertainty. Mm. God speaks over his people. I am in control. Mm. These words of truth will need to be firmly established in us as the season unfolds. These are the words mm. of a prophecy, in case you've just tuned in, mm. uh, from Sharon Stone for the 2013, predominantly for those in the UK and Europe. Yeah. Yeah, he then goes, she then goes on to say, um, Howard, the, these words of truth will need to be firmly, uh, this is I am in control, established in us as the season unfolds. I like this part coming up. This is a time when both darkness and glory are intensifying in the nations and God is assuring his people that, number one, he knows his thoughts, that, uh, number two, he is not shaken. Uh, that's really interesting to me. Uh, he is in control. There is a new reality of increasing instability in the earth. Instability is the new reality. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because people, sometimes you almost get the feeling that people think, oh, you know, oh, poor God, he doesn't know what's going on. You know, it's the world is, is doing... But this is, all, this is all clearly laid out in the Bible, as far as I'm concerned, anyway, uh, when we looked recently at the book of Matthew and the Lord Jesus begins to clearly, clearly lay out the events that are going to begin to happen and we can just see that we're, we're approaching that moment where literally he lays out a map, a time map of things that are going to take place and that uh, these are just the beginnings of sorrows and woes that are coming upon us. So I would expect a prophetic word like this to line up with where we are in that season mm. uh, that Jesus was talking about. And it looks like this word just lines exactly up with that. Yeah, we, This instability, is yeah. we see it. We've been mm. seeing it played out since 2007, or beginning mm. of 2008 particularly, um, with the, the financial... Global uh, markets, yeah. It is absolutely... Uh, as much as they try to paint over and gloss over all the problems, the reality is we're all bust. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, uh, maybe China's in, in, in the... Is it in the, what do you call it, in the black? In the black, yeah. yes, I think what they're supposed but to be. But they are own so much debt for, uh, from America that really they're in, they could find themselves in the red. Very, yes. And being a communist country, or oh, it's pretty red anyway. Yes. But have, coming back to the, uh, the prophecy, um, God is still releasing uh, to us in, into this reformation yeah. um, which will include an awakening, a revival, s social justice, mm -hmm. harvest, uh, these have already begun with amazing glory spots in the earth. Mm. There are parts of the earth where you see this happening. And, and for, ironically, funnily enough, China and mm. the Far East, mm. people that are coming to the Lord are not necessarily in the Western civilization. It seems that we've, we've almost uh, had our opportunity to accept Christ mm. as our saviour mm. uh, and recognise God as being... Um, sovereign over all the earth uh, and it seems that people from other nations including africa as well we, it's interesting what sharon stone says about africa and i think if you're from africa or you're african and living there now and you're watching this program this is really good news uh, for africa later yeah. on when we get to it mm. do you want to read on from where I yeah um it says the pause button is now off and proverbs 13, 12 is, is remarked, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Um, I, this again, I, I highlighted this, it says, there has been a questioning that has led to a grief and weariness in the body of Christ. I mean, we could park there and speak yeah. for a long time. It says this is because revival did not come after the refreshing of the early 90s, but the ongoing move of the Holy Spirit is coming back on our understanding track 
bringing our understanding back on track. The pause button is off. This is an advance in momentum of God's kingdom. It reminds me of a word that I read by Smith Wigglesworth some years ago. I'm sure you've heard it about the word and the spirit coming together. That you know there will be this. This is that final. Um, great uh, revival that will begin to happen it kind of reminds me of that and you do sense this what uh, Sharon is referring to here as a grief and a weariness in the body of Christ it's, it's all around and, yeah. and you and I were talking about you know some examples of that that we've where that weariness has begun to ease into between church uh, um, organizations and members so it's become particular leadership Oh, absolutely. We become weary. Yes. Uh, and Sharon actually goes into that a bit later Ooh. on, so we'll come, we can come to that. Yes. But the danger is that weariness, if we're not very careful, and I was a part of that weariness yes. uh, recently, and that's why I had to step back for three months, because mm. I was just overwhelming all the pressures. And it's only now having stepped back. If you like, I, I put it into, like, if you were in uh, sort of First World War, Second World War, um, warfare yeah. you have a front trench front line trench you have a second line trench and i don't know how many more trenches there were but i was in the front line and you become so battle fatigued yes and you're you're, you're bobbing up and down trying to you know miss you know keep yourself safe um and but trying to get the army of god mm. to keep moving forward yes figuratively speaking mm. that when i went back into the second trench which is mm. where i was for the last three months mm. I, I was able to see much clearer because I wasn't in the firing line, mm -hmm. not immediately. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to see what was happening. And then now I pop back into the front trench again, but it's easier to lead once you've been able to see the bigger picture. Yes. And the problem is when, you, when ministers uh, of the word of God and missionaries or whatever, those on the front line, literally, they become battle weary. Oh, that's so true. Uh, and and you, you become, you know, the, you know when you get shell shock, what's it called? Is it, it's called shell, shell shock. shock. Exactly. You, 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 it's like you're just, you're in a uh, sort of like a trance almost. Yes. It, it's incredible. And whilst you're in that situation, you're of no heavenly good or no I, earthly good. Siva and I just came back from a, a, a short holiday. And it was the first holiday we've had in a long time. We had exactly the same experience that we just came off the front line because between church Revelation Church, Revelation, mm. we're at it all the time. Yeah. And I agree with you, we came off the front line and I spent, you know, endless days and nights, you know, in, to, on, in the stateroom on the ship, just seeking the Lord. And it's amazing how, when you come back, how you see more clearly and you think more clearly. So I just say that in agreement with what yeah. you said. Go to the uh, section where it says, rearranging winds, changing the course of nations. Um, is that the storm of heaven? Yeah. It says what? The, uh, well, it's the headline: rearranging winds. Oh yeah, I've got it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rear, rear, rear. It's hard to say. Uh, Go to the text. Okay, so it starts by saying, um, "We will see the kingdom of God released in greater measure and glory." No, oh, that yeah. excites no, me. No, no, no. Yeah, that's good. That's under the see the kingdom of God present with power. Rearranging <laughs> winds was the next one after that. That's right, and then it says uh, the old. That's the it. old world's time has cycled around again to become a new world time and to rewrite history. Uh, no longer a Constantine conversion uh, that an advanced religion without Christ, uh, there is only one way to know God and that is through Jesus. And then I highlighted hidden winds of change have been developing in the people of God and they are now blowing change into their world. Very good. Yeah, Storm yeah. of heaven. Storm of heaven, it says, God is sending to us a great storm of heaven, which is breaking uh, the storm, which is a breaking storm of restoration over the nations. As the pause button is lifted and the storm of heaven breaks, we find ourselves in a day of opportunities. We will enter a season uh, until 2020 that history will refer to as the days of wonder. Now, this oh. is this is great. This is exciting. This is exciting. <clears throat> this is where the church actually starts to take um, a real active role mm -hmm. in witnessing to the nations through miracles, suddenly, yeah. that is an interesting word. Yeah. It's not probably in the dictionary, yeah. but what is a suddenly? 
Well, it's something that's, that suddenly comes upon, I guess you're asking me, yeah. you're going to tell me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's something that happens suddenly, that, yeah. that's all of a sudden. Exactly, yeah. and uh, unexpected, but God is behind these. These are the days yeah, of wonder. Yeah. People will suddenly mm -hmm. see a miracle and hear of a report, because this is the first time in human history where we've had mass communication, that if something happens oh, in the Philippines mm -hmm. or something happens in it. Tasmania, it's instantly with us, yes. and there'll be suddenlies that will be a testimony to God's power. That's what I believe that uh, mm. Sharon is saying here. Mm. And it goes on to say, and the tangible presence of God in mm. everyday life. Mm. That's what people need to see. There are so, and I can't blame them, there are so many people out there that don't have a faith, uh, or have lost their faith, or they've just not even interested that there is a God, because they can't, they don't see him, but because they can't tangibly see him. Yeah. It says there's going to be a tangible presence of God. Mm. Uh, the reality of God will become so real yes. and obvious that even the atheist agnostic is going to actually go, wow, this is of God. There must be. And what you say about technology is interesting as well because uh, the ability to pass that news around quickly. Uh, we've got so many technologies in the earth today. We've got the Facebooks and we've got the as you said, the Twitters and so on and so forth. So when uh, I've noticed, I am noticing that when something suddenly is happening in the earth now, the news about it is getting out there that instantly. much quicker. Yeah. So it's instant. Yeah. So, so, so From the one glory, end of the earth to the other. So yeah. No longer have we got um, a, a void or a gap of uh, mm. days or weeks or months as it used to be in, t mm. in history past. Mm. This is it. This is why we are part of God's army today. And, and I say this in a, in a passive way, but we still need to be uh, in action to do what God wants us to do. We've Amen. got to be bold. We've got to be courageous. Amen. Okay? We've got to be wise. Mm. And we've got to have that courage. Amen. We've really got to have courage to stand up for truth and righteousness. Amen. Carry on. This is Praise great. God. Can I just say, I just, this, what echoes for me in this, what you've just read, and the tangible presence of God in everyday life. Mm. I could say that three times because that's like, for me, that's, that's, I campaign for that. I, that's, I'm a personal campaigner for that line, the tangible presence of God in everyday life. Because then there'd be no argument about exactly. what we are saying, what you're saying. Yeah. People could actually say, yeah. You're deluded, uh, like Richard Dawkins would say in yeah. the God Delusion book, you know? Yeah. Christians are deluded, mm. okay? But when there's a tangible presence of God, which they cannot themselves deny, it doesn't, it no longer the onus is on us mm. to prove that God exists mm. because they will see the tangible evidence of God mm. right before mm. their very eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad and it's the grace of God that's bringing that, sorry to cut yeah, you, no, but I it, just, it's so the grace of God that's so bringing exciting. that tangible presence because God, you know, the Bible says that he doesn't want anyone to perish but yeah. he wants all to come to a knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. So that's why that tangible presence is going to come. That's why there'll be more and more manifestations of seeing God. It will become clearer and clearer as, as the prophecy is saying. Mm. Goes on to say, demonstrations of the kingdom and mm. the government of God. Now this, is, this line in itself, Sharon, you are so spot on. So many times in scripture does it talk about the coming kingdom of God. Yeah. And I don't think we truly grasp what it's saying here. Mm. The kingdom of God is akin to a ruling power or authority. All right, God used that uh, through the times of Israel, through kings. Although God didn't want to do that, he acquiesced, mm. he gave in mm. to the demands of the people that they wanted a king. That's true. Okay, so mm. they had an earthly king. Mm. But up until that point, he, uh, the Lord himself, was the king of Israel, okay? So God has given away to that. But the prophecies thereafter, and they're included in, for example, chapter 2, 24 of Daniel. Yes. Then there will come a kingdom that will never be brought to ruin. Mm -hmm. And until uh, that day, mm. earthly governments, mm. kingdoms will rule. But mm. that day when the Lord Jesus becomes um, the king of earth again, if you like, heaven and earth, mm. um, all these other governments will pass away they will become nothing. Yeah. And you can see that even, even, even as a child, surely you can see, you don't have to ha have great intelligence, that the governments of this world cannot cope, have no authority really to make a, 
a distinct change, a definite change, with courage and conviction and wisdom that is not of this world. Because even, even today, our own governments, uh, we can see that they're so anti-God and mm. they're becoming more progressively anti-God. Mm. And therefore, we need the establishment of God's kingdom to come. And it will never be destroyed. It mm. will stand for times indefinite. Read the scriptures. They're not nonsense. They will come to fruition. There is nothing that God has promised uh, that will not come to fulfillment. Mm. It's not just my word. You will see it. And listen, at the end of the day, no matter what you write about us, what you blog about us, you are really got to see the end result. You can't say anything till you see the end. Because in the end, it's amazing. It's amazing. Carry on. You know, I just want to break in with a little prophetic word myself because you know, I'm watching you uh, respond to this, Howard, and the excitement that's on you. And, and I'm thinking about how you opened the program and with those prophecies about what God was going to do through Christian television. And it's interesting that this prophecy is so exciting to you because you are, you're swept into it. Yeah. This is exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. You, 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 you are playing a key part, as in Revelation TV and other stations where, who are on the prophetic edge will play a key part in not just, and this isn't going to be about, for me anyway, Howard, it's not just going to be about uh, being a voice to the church because the church cried out for Christian television for years because we wanted to see uh, really uh, programming that we could, we could be blessed by and we could show our children and so on. But really, that's not what it's about. Yeah. Uh, um, the, the gospel is designed for people who don't know Christ. The gospel is designed for people exactly. who, who have no idea about Christ. Yeah. And it's so, not for us, it's not for the church. Exactly. At the moment, you know, people flick through Sky, they get to the Christian channels and they just whiz on by. Nothing there for them. But you know, what I'm receiving from even reading the words of this prophecy is that there's coming a day when people are not going to be, the, the, the words that Sharon has used here, the church will not be able to help itself from, but, uh, from manifesting the ways of its saviour. I'm, glad you, I'm yeah. glad you brought that second yeah. line up because that's, well, that's it. It's key. They won't be able to help themselves. They won't be able to I help can't themselves. help myself being enthusiastic about exactly. this. Exactly. And people won't be able to help themselves but say, what, what is this? You know, what, what exactly is this? Because we've tried everything else. We've tried government uh, uh, coalitions. We've tried every sort of, of thing to try to create. <laughs> I mean, uh, who would have ever <laughs> dreamt that a, a coalition between liberal and <laughs> conservative, maybe liberal <laughs> and labor, but for <laughs> them, to be in existence, that's, an, that's amazing, really. I mean, that's almost a miracle. I no, know some people wouldn't see it that way. Well, you, to be, I don't mean to be insulting, but it's almost like digging the bottom of the, the proverbial you know, yeah. barrel. Yeah, exactly. see, let's, let's throw something together here. And here's uh, the general public saying, OK, we, are we buying it? I'm not sure we are buying it, Howard. No, we're not. I think we know it's, it's rhetoric. We know that we're, yeah. we're having the wool pull up, pulled over our eyes, and then we start saying, hang on a minute, there's got to be something else. Hence, God positions a prophetic television stations that are now, we look at the timing, we're coming to a time where the, the stations themselves are going to be delivering over networks that are worldwide. Satellites won't even be so key anymore. And then God can make his statements through these stations that he's trained and put yeah. into place. That's why it's exciting for me looking, watching you. Yeah, well, you appreciate side. technology as well. And sure. You know what's coming. Yeah. We were talking about this earlier. I don't want to get sidetracked here. Yeah. But you've got to know that you, and I know I've said it before, don't be afraid of the technology we have today. Otherwise, you will miss out yeah. on what is to come because there will not be a delivery as, um, and I've said it before, Hughes also just uh, um, backed me up on that. Technology is getting to the extent where we won't need satellites because mm. satellites cost thousands. I mean, 30,000 a month, ridiculous. Mm. Um, Sky TV, ridiculous. Um, too expensive. Free sat, free view, all very expensive for, for organizing organizations like ourselves. But the day is coming when it will all come through the internet. And one day, the governments will switch us off. Trust me. But Amen. until that point, let's make hay while the sun shines. Amen. Let's, this, this next uh, sentence is, is brilliant. They will not be silent. We will see many prominent people. This is, yeah. uh, in case you've just joined in, it's a prophetic word by Dr. Sharon Stone uh, to the UK um, and uh, Europe. Uh, for this next year, this year, sorry, present, 2013. 
we will see many prominent people come to faith in Jesus. Some believe even members of the royal family. Significant media personalities and business leaders who are household names will find true radical conversion. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm not going to name names. Yeah. Go, you don't. Can, yeah, no. no. Yeah. But I can think of people that I look at yes. and I think, lovely man, yes. great woman, you, all you need to know is Christ and you will be so blessed yes. and you will be such a, an, if you like, an influence on our generation. Yes. And I, I picture them in my mind. Yes. Okay. I, as you speak that, I, I sit and I watch the media and there are several people, and it's interesting, I want to say something about those, several people that I, I sense that have already begun to convert. They, they say things maybe quietly mm. or overtly or secretly, or, or, but you just, something jumps out, but a Christian can recognize it and say, mm -hmm. hey, where's that coming from? Yeah. And I heard such a person just yesterday, or oh, sorry, the day before yesterday, before I left home, I was watching a program and heard somebody say something that had to have come from a Christian heart. Mm. And you know, you sit there and you think, God, you're going to do this. The other thing that I wanted to say is that for those who are prophetic, okay, those who are in the prophetic flow, is that God is beginning to put people from the media, this is happening with me personally, so I know this, he's beginning to put people from the media in my dreams. Yeah, so well-known people, I could call some names that you would know worldwide, but yet they're in my dreams and they're saying things to me in my dreams that, and then when we begin to analyze those dreams and I, I talk with uh, various people, uh, now, some will say, well, they're symbolic, but you know what? I've been getting a sense that they're not. Mm. I've been getting a sense that God is showing me that that he's breaking through into these people's hearts. They know. They're, mm. they're, they're at the pinnacle, Howard, if you like, of the world, and so they know what's out there, and there's no other solutions for them, and they see there's only one way, and that's to come back to Christ. Yeah. And I believe even this program tonight will actually speak to such people that are watching this Amen. that are, as it says here, significant media personalities yes. and business leaders that are household names will have a radical conversion to Christ, Jesus Christ, just as Saul of Tarsus did, who was a very intelligent man, pro uh, as a uh, higher uh, level as you could probably get at that time, yes. very switched on, mm. knew uh, scriptures, but also was misled deceived into thinking that Jesus Christ and his followers were um, apostate or whatever you want to call it. But the thing is, today, uh, we're looking to the prophetic words here being spoken mm -hmm. that these media uh, personalities will be uh, radically converted to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. 60 that... seconds for a prayer, Howard, can yeah. I? Yeah. Uh, take the, this camera and just say, if you're, you, you may be watching right now, no, you, may, you may be, but I feel led to pray and just to say to you, I uh, hope that you, you're picking this up, to say to you that you may be prominent in the media. We've seen, look at the history, even recent histories, we've seen great uh, uh, personalities from the music world and from the world of Hollywood just dying, just leaving this world without having left a decent mark. And I would say to you, you may be watching right now, you may be very successful, a successful person, but this prophecy is now sweeping you in. It is, it is Lord, the Lord, as we said at the beginning of the program, he sent his word out and it's, you're hearing it because God wants you to hear it, because God wants you to, to come into his kingdom and to become a part of the light and not a part of the darkness. And, and I, I, I want to say this, just like anybody else, you don't have to wait for your conversion moment. You just have to get into the flow of this. Don't wait until everything changes in your life. Just change and get into the flow. We pray for you that you would receive that word. In Jesus' name. Amen. And it says, it goes on to say, these people, you, the ones that are actually um, quite well informed uh, as far as secular things are concerned, but you will be more enlightened with spiritual insight. You will not be silent, but you will use your notoriety to yeah. proclaim Jesus Amen. boldly. Mm -hmm. This will stir many Christians mm -hmm. out of a fear and apathy into a boldness that they have never had or that they blacked. That's an interesting, that's because, an interesting you know, prophecy. What was happened yeah. over the last uh, few years, mm. and particularly the last three or four years, I've yeah. seen the tide change against yes. Christianity. Oh. And it's 
brought fear of speaking out boldly uh, because you don't want to be defamed. You don't want to say, well, you're a bigot. You'd be, uh, somebody wants to call you a bigot, which interestingly, by the way, the dictionary definition has changed on that. It used to be that someone who adhered to doctrine. Now it's those who disagree with what is politically correct today. They've changed the dictionaries. Anyway, um, they will not be silent. An army of end time evangelists will emerge with revival fire and power and authority mm. that our generation has never seen. Mm. Many magnificent signs and wonders will accompany them. These are the scriptures which Jesus, uh, if you like, instigated and through his sayings about greater works you will do than what he was doing. Because the, if you like, even raising Lazarus, he said, the hour will come, this is nothing. The hour will come when all those, all those in the memorial tombs mm. will be raised. Yes. Amazing. Wonderful. And it, just to back up what you said there, Howard, in terms of the way Christians are perceived and why people have backed away from making public statements. Maybe somebody was saying to me recently that if you actually type in the words Christians are on Google, and see, you know, you get the predictions of what comes up and you will see these words like bigoted, uh, 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 you know, unfair, you know, uh, uh, hypocrites, racist. all these kinds of racists, yeah, all these kinds of words, a whole string of them. Mm. Uh, so Google is actually telling you this is what people think. This is what people think. So Christians would, it's natural. You don't want to be unpopular. You don't set out in life to be unpopular. No. I mean, that's the most hurtful thing to do to yourself. But then there's also this, this the other picture, Howard, is that, television and media and, and, and Hollywood, uh, very often when, when depicting Christian people, uh, were depicted as crazy, weak, were, uh, weak or, or, or complete nutcases, exactly. And so we, we see, but then there's a bit later on, we begin to see a word coming through uh, about Hollywood as well. So we, maybe we'll, we'll... Yeah, carry on, please. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it says, um, let's see what it is. It says, um, am I jumping ahead here? It says that the kingdom of God will, uh, will only come to those uh, who choose to rely on their own strengths and abilities, but instead have pressed into God, not just for themselves, but also for those they represent. God is giving back to the people, to the nation, an appetite for wholesome, beautiful things, particularly in the arts and in the entertainment. God is enabling people to see entertainment for what it is. They will be repulsed by what they once thought of as good and acceptable entertainment. Uh, there will be an increase in the purging of the entertainment mountain both in content and personnel. And then from Hollywood, songs of hope, deliverance and healing will come and help wash youth free of self-hatred and abandonment. These songs of purity that will inspire identity and call a generation to holiness. Hollywood will bring a clarion call to deal with social injustice and help uh, distribute resources for aid. For aid. Wow. That's, I think that's a very, very, very it's strong It's a big word. ask, isn't it? In the ask. natural. Yeah. But you see, with man, all these things would seem impossible. With God, nothing is impossible because he's changed the hearts of even some of the most stubborn-hearted people in history. Well, I've been praying for this. Sorry, Anna, just mm. a quick word on that. I've been praying for this for a long time. I want to see Hollywood. I personally have been, I've been a Hollywood watcher for years. I take movies like The Matrix and and movies like that, and I see the God in those movies, and I know many people yeah, watch well, them do as well. Yeah, well, particularly in that movie. In that movie, and, you know, a lot maybe of biblical for the, significance. Exactly, and for maybe those for, who know their Bible. Exactly, and of course, my mm. prayer has been, you know, when, when will we see who's the next Cecil D. De, B. DeMille? He's out there somewhere. Yeah, probably ready watching when you this. Are. You know, probably <laughs> yeah, exactly, probably watching this program right now. You know, someone who's called to make great movies and show the power of God. Think of the the great mir miracles we've seen remakes of everything in this last couple of years. Batman, Superman, you name it. What about Christ? Mm. Where are the Christ movies, the m movies that present His power? That's got to come from Hollywood, and I'm I'm. I'm standing on this word. I believe it's true, and I believe we will see it come to pass. Well, Daniel 2.21 is quoted here, yeah. and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Yes. Going on to leadership. Mm. Do you want to read that? 
Yeah, there's a wake-up call for the UK church and its leadership. I guess that includes me. There's a battle raging over leadership and in all walks of life, unrighteous leaders will be exposed and will fall. God is being ruthless with people uh, that bring a limitation to kingdom advancement. Good leaders will also topple for lack of support. That's very important. Mm. So God is calling his people to support good leaders with, an, with a renewed focus. Dic just one last part, dictators falling have left a void because of a lack of righteous occupation. And now many dictators will rise in the nations. So there's some, there's some very um, sobering words there concerning the leadership. The, the, the bit, Howard, that stands out for me, it, it, it says here that, you know, that, uh, that good leaders will also topple uh, for lack of support. So God is calling his people to support good leaders with a new, renewed focus. Um, that's an interesting statement, and it has to be by the Spirit of God. Otherwise, how do you know who's a good leader from who isn't? Mm. But this is something that I've seen over the years that because of this, we talked about this weariness and this, uh, the, 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 that has crept into the body of Christ, that in, on many occasions the good leaders are being tarred with the same brushes as, as perhaps the, the leaders who have left uh, uh, or brought the name of the Lord into disrepute. Especially and, through Christian television. Uh, well, maybe so. If we've, mm. <laughs> we've got the, the good and the bad. We've got to take the good with the bad, haven't mm. we? The wheat and the tares. So, so may this prophecy come to pass, may it be true. I think it'd be wonderful to see churches supported mm. correctly. It says, many have stopped manning their posts because of weariness, hopelessness, and through being overwhelmed. Now, this is talking about leadership, mm. okay? Uh, and in this context, you can see that our leaders, are, and there are so many good men and women who are in the modern day uh, Christian vernacular, in, their, in the God's army, that have become battle weary. And, and it says hopelessness. How can a leader who has faith in God become hopeless? You know, I think it's because we live in the world and we have an enemy that's just arrayed against us, and he constantly bombards us with, with um, uh, this is my opinion anyway, that he constantly bombards us with images of failure. And when we keep seeing, as, uh, Sharon nailed it earlier on when she said, you know, we were expecting revival, you know, but we didn't see it. We were expecting people to be healed, we didn't see it. And then, in addition to that, you've got this waves, wave after wave of negative publicity about this ministry or that ministry. So what tends to happen in the end is that the people that we had faith in, that we thought at least, well, at least, at least that ministry is true, or at least this ministry is true, we've found that our faith has been knocked in those ministries. So there are very few men of, or women of God that we can look up to. And I think this is what wearies a man. This is what wearies a man in ministry. Because instead of looking to God as the supreme, we're looking to other men. And so that's where we begin to become weary, we begin to fail, we begin to uh, become weak. And so this is how I think our hope can be lost, you know, hopelessness and being overwhelmed. Yeah. And, I want, what I want to do, because I can, I can see we're not going to get through all of this, so what I'm doing is sending this on uh, so that the office can actually pass this, the whole of this uh, prophecy on mm. to you through email um, and Hopefully that's something you can continue with because <clears throat> we're running short of time. Mm. It, it's a lot longer than what we can deal with right now, but there are so many other aspects there. If you want to have a quick think about it, mm. I'm going to look at some of the emails because literally we've got nine minutes. We may even show something else. Mm. Oh, <clears throat> here's one. I've got to read this. It's a very negative one. I know who it's from. It's from uh, Mr. Robert Patterson who loves to watch our programs but hates us signs himself off as spawn of Satan and his boyfriend, proud sodomite. Tells you where you're coming from. Not the Sharon Stone prophecy again. No, it's a different one, sir. Never read it out before. Only came out uh, this um, couple of days ago. We assume you keep repeating these lies. I'm going to read this because I'm not afraid of you, you see. We assume you keep repeating these lies in the hope you might start to believe them yourselves. Uh, for those of us with a medium, um, a modicum, sorry, of intelligence, no, it says that beware, the wise become foolish uh, and God will shove us aside the wisdom of this world. Let me tell you that, uh, Mr. Patterson. You will never fool us. I'm not trying to fool you, I'm trying to reach your heart. No doubt the missing link uh, has one of his tall tales from the dark side lined up so he's not left out. In the meantime, we've turned off to watch some porn. 
Well, that tells me exactly where you're coming from. God bless you. May you have a, um, a porn-free life. So much more educational and enlightening. Well, sir, it all depends which way you're standing up and which way you're going in. Uh, let me just say, uh, at least I've read your email. You normally get away with me not reading it, but I'm reading it. Uh, you see, this highlights just where the world is coming. Isn't it amazing that they watch Revelation TV? This couple watch Revelation TV all day long. <laughs> they, 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 they told me they're themselves. on benefits, so they've got all day long to watch it. Yes. It's only us that are paying for them. Yes. Because uh, of our, through our taxes. But anyway, oh. God bless them. Something might sink in one day, but I've never had a good word. But the great thing is, out of the heart comes the abundance of, uh, sorry, out of the, what they say comes out of the abundance of the heart, yeah. isn't it? It's, the it's mouth speaks. It's really interesting, and, and I've, I've heard this before that they call me the missing link. You know, I, I, think, really, I think it's really exciting because I do they, too. there's been times when I've, I've shared um, uh, just real, you know, we were talking about the presence of God in everyday lives, and um, it takes boldness to share some of the things that you've gone through. And I've shared some of the things on Revelation TV, and this is what they're referring to, my tall tales. Well, my tales are tall, but I'll tell you something, they're real, they're factual. These are not lies, these are directly from God in heaven. So, you know what, I, I, I get excited, and I've, I've just, they've actually just excited me because, you know, this is what the Lord said, rejoice when they, yeah. when they uh, persecute you and speak of you But the good way. thing is, this <laughs> is what the scriptures are saying, or that prophecy is saying, that these people will actually come, could come to Christ. Amen. Uh, it would be brilliant. Anyway, let me read well, some good... Well, there's a flip side, but yeah. then we won't go there. But. Read some positive <laughs> ones. Dear Howard, uh, Tara and I want to thank you and Revelation TV for all your support over the years. We would like to visit your TV station in February. Is this all right? Absolutely. God bless you. John and Tara Fitzgerald. Uh, read the next one. Hi, Howard. When someone is conditioned or brought up in the mindset dysfunctional environment, so powerful, e.g. E drugs, porn, that's interesting, Scientology or whatever, and that conditioning takes them away off of Christianity and they die unsaved, who is to blame? Is, is it fair they have eternal damnation with their life on earth? Uh, it was awful too. Regards, Steve. Good question. I haven't got time to go into the answer, but God, let me put it like this. God actually says he desires that no one, yeah. no one perish. He does not take the delight in the wicked, right? He does not take delight in the death of the wicked, sorry, but he wants everyone to come to repentance and to get saved. That's God's heart. He's full of grace. Yeah, he God full of is grace. Full of yeah. grace full of grace for the world, full of grace for people who even don't know him. And even the final judgment, if you really look at it, you'll find that it's not about judging people about whether they didn't know God or not, or if they didn't. The final judgment is going to be about how they treated God's beloved. And that's a good, good uh, lesson to those who might be wanting to treat us badly. So uh, God's full of grace. He's mm. full of grace. We just don't understand how full of grace he is. Okay. Amen. Um, Okay, I've just, my goodness, let me go. A word of prophecy. Mm. I had a dream in which, uh, very similar to what you are speaking about, in the dream there was a sea, simmering sea. The water was black. A voice said that a storm is coming. And next, uh, this black water flooded the whole earth. And as I watched after a while, the water started becoming clearer and clearer. Eventually, it became crystal clear. And like oil uh, in appearance, the oily crystal like water moved at a speed. And then I looked and I could see um, that it, this beautiful crystal water was moving upon the whole earth and then upon the fields of what already is harvested. Mm -hmm. And I looked up to the heavens and the color of the sky was bronze and I looked straight ahead and I could see uh, big boots heavily walking and stamping down on the harvested wheat. Mm. But the crystal water was uh, following those boots and there was a corn of wheat that was not harvested. The big boots stepped on it, but the, did not crush it. And as I awoke, I had the sense that this corn of wheat was Israel, sent uh, from Carmilla. Thank mm. you, Carmilla. Just trying to read, because you've bothered to write in. I'm going to try and get all of these in, in the next uh, three minutes. My name is George and I live in Blythe, Northumberland. I would like to read Malachi. I'd like you to read Malachi 3 and 4. Do you want to look okay, that one up? And we'll come to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Malachi 3 and 4. Uh, just to tell, uh, 
just tell us uh, what she has said and stop dragging it out, please. Oh, you do get some, don't you? Some others do have them. Uh, good evening, Brother Howard and Reverend Hugh. Thanks for this discussion. I'm enjoying the program. I had a dream revelation on the 5th of January. Uh, a huge figure above a house hovering over something. I can only see his, this wings and underneath. And because it was not very clear, then this huge bird came from underneath the figure. And I think this is going to be too long. Sorry, hope this makes sense. Sister Catherine, I'll have to move on. It's too long for this short time that I've got left. Have you got that? Malachi, Malachi 3 and 4? Yep. So Malachi 3 and verse 4, is that right? Yep. Okay. Well, uh, is it that right? 3 and 4. Let's, let's, you, let's okay. read what you've well, got. Malachi, Malachi chapter 3 uh, and verse 3, I'll read 3 and 4. Yeah. He says, He will sit as a refiner and a purifier oh. of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer uh, to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old, as in the former years. So this purifying is going to take place amongst the saints. Mm. So well, amongst the brethren mm. and, uh, that will become um, if you like, saintly in that sense. Mm. Welcome back, Howard. The live show is the best thing on TV. Uh, informal and incisive. I've missed it so much. Much better than Q&A. Keep the format. It's special. Alan. Thanks a lot, Alan. God bless you. Uh, now, praise God. What an amazing prophetic word. Hallelujah. Pam in Devon. Thank you, Pam. I'm glad you're not uh, slating us. It doesn't matter anyway if you did. <laughs> Even, evening, gentlemen. Can't help saying this. When things get desperate, God will show everybody the illusions Satan has weaved. Very good. Jesus Christ is majesty. Bless you, says Christine. Um, hello, fab presenters. It may be helpful to read the prophecy out in one go, not broken up. Has Rev TV or could Rev TV have it available on the website soon? Great. That's exactly what I've done in sending it to Rochelle and she'll get it on the website. Brilliant. I'm going to forward that as well. Just want to speak while I forward this to Rochelle? Got yeah. one minute left. Uh, not really, but hi Rochelle. Is it our Rochelle or is it the other Rochelle, another Rochelle? But Don't worry about that. Yeah, it's fine. Carry on. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, no, that's fine. That, I just think that I, I'm listening to these emails and they're wonderful. I'm reflecting on some things that I've been thinking about all day, but just go ahead. That's yeah. fine. Well, 20 seconds. Oh, that's it. I thought you that's had more it. emails. No, oh. I do, but I can't get oh, to them. Okay. But I want to thank you all for being with us tonight. We didn't really know what we we're going to be talking about. It was something at the last minute. We left it open to the Holy Spirit. I know some of you will understand that. God bless you and thank you, you. Yeah, thank you. It's been great just yeah. being here and sharing. Take care. Send in for the promise.